So my friend Rhett's PC has, uh, I was about to say seen better days, but it's never seen better days. <laughs> uh, we're gonna fix that today. Buckle up. Buckle up. <laughs> Welcome back to Craft Computing, everyone. As always, I'm Jeff. I'm Rhett. You brought something a little interesting today. Yep, my baby. Do you, you, you want to share some some thoughts about it? <laughs> well, take a look. <laughs> if you can't tell, I'm rocking this sweet, sweet uh, HP rig straight from Walmart. Got this bad boy, inherited it from my grandpa, who I'm sure was swindled by a salesman. And I never, ever bothered opening it up until my other PC died. And uh, yeah, actually, the thing's rocking an i5, uh, clocked at 2.8 gigahertz. Mm -hmm. We got eight gigs of DDR3. And then uh, my good buddy took some pity on me, as is a common trend in my life lately. <laughs> and uh, he's... The trend will continue later today, yeah. by the way. <laughs> Uh, and he sent me a GTX 580 with uh, one and a half gigabytes of video RAM. So um, it's kind of a... It's, it's a ye olde Frankenstein. Yes, a ye olde Frankenstein, exactly. That's exactly what I was gonna say. So today we are gonna make this just a little bit better for you. I can't wait. So we're gonna shoot the next section a little bit more in a vlog style because I really want Rhett to walk you through some of the more finer details of this build. Uh, as I said, it is quintessential mid-2000s Frankenstein build. So if you appreciate this kind of stuff, you're gonna like this. Rhett, walk me through the system. A little excited to jump into what I think is the crowning jewel of this whole thing, right? So I was saying earlier, got the graphics card from a friend. So excited to get this bad boy put in, but it wouldn't fit. It wouldn't fit. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. <laughs> so I had to physically cut the graphics card, bend it out of the way, and of course, I couldn't just be plugging things in. I held it in place with, uh, God, it looks like, I guess just two binder clips? I thought there was three, but I guess just two binder clips. And this holds it in place so that I can uh, plug and unplug uh, appropriately. So yeah, uh, we've got a GTX 580 inside of there. Uh, not an RX 580, this is an old school NVIDIA 1.5 gigabytes of GDDR3 or 5, I think it was 5 at this point. So the case itself is obviously an HP Walmart special, yep. uh, and I believe you said this had an i5 in it, and I think it's a first gen i5, I think it was an i5 760. 760, that's right. Yep. Yeah, so uh, are we ready to like open this I thing? think we're ready to open this thing uh. and show them uh, some of your fine engineering work. <sighs> Look at my cable management. There we go. Look on at my works in despair, puny mortals. <laughs> There's the uh, the i5 760 buried down somewhere underneath that aluminum heatsink. Uh, we do have eight gigabytes of DDR3, probably 1066. I doubt it's going to be anything too fantastic. You do have two hard drives in there, although I couldn't help but notice only one of them is plugged in. <laughs> yeah, I noticed that too when I brought it over. I I don't know. I'm sure that uh, one of them might have been. Uh, the hard drive from my previous computer, and then the other one was what was already in here. So yeah, that's a 500 gig Mac Store uh, SATA drive, it looks like. Uh, there is our fantastically cable managed and uh, very, very long graphics card. That's the GTX 580. Call of Duty edition, I couldn't help but notice. Yes. And, uh, and you can see the wonderful installation job from the uh, yeah. I.O. plate that apparently wouldn't fit. Yeah, I had to get real crafty to get this bad boy uh, to fit in here. And uh, like I was telling you earlier, I was in a very persistent state of mind. <laughs> and I almost gave up until I realized that um, I have the power. And also we've got a uh, Thermaltake 650 watt smart power supply. So definitely not the power supply that came in this. The thing that preempted all of this uh, upgrading for Rhett was actually I had a patron and a uh, longtime viewer, Regan, donate a motherboard and CPU when he found out that Rhett was still gaming on, a, uh, on an original i5. Unfortunately, I don't think we're gonna use this board. Uh, there's a couple of reasons for that. Number one, I'm gonna be upgrading his case and there's no rear IO uh, plate for this motherboard. Uh, the second reason is there's only two DDR3 RAM slots on this motherboard. His RAM actually is 
for two gigabyte six, so we couldn't get more than four gigabytes on this board. So instead of the Asus H81M motherboard and the i5-4440, which would have been probably a 50 to 60% improvement over the i5-760 that Rhett has, we're gonna go with a little bit more of a modern Ryzen platform. Here I have an MSI Pro VH B350M motherboard and a Ryzen 3 2200G. And you're asking, well, this board only has two RAM slots too. Well, I just happen to have an extra 16 gigs of DDR4 that I'm not using, so Rhett, my gift to you. Rhett wanted to point out a, a couple of the other features that this case has that not a lot do. Uh, we have the hot swap drive, so these just kind of pivot out like this and allow the CD drive to pop out the front. Uh, there's also this unique thing right down in here. This was the media expansion slot. And unfortunately, I don't have a very good light in there, but if you look way down in there, that's actually just a USB type B port. So HP's expansion method was putting a two and a half inch drive into a plastic enclosure and having you slam it into a USB 2.0 hub. So what do you say we start tearing this thing apart and uh, give it some new life? All right, I'll let you. Are you sure? I, I'll, I'm positive. She's your baby. <sighs> oh, yeah. it did come off. Why yeah. did it? Oh, oh you boy. Use it as a spacer. I must have. That's... <laughs> Whoops. All right, so one last upgrade before we get uh, too crazy. Actually, two upgrades, because we're swapping out your graphics card, too. I forgot about that. Uh, so we're swapping out his graphics card from the old uh, GTX 580 over to a GTX 760. Now, that might seem like a little bit of a downgrade, because they go, oh, 80 is always better than 60. Well, it has two gigabytes more video memory, and it's actually slightly faster in a lot of, uh, of benchmarks. So it will be a step up, and it draws, what, two-thirds of the power? Yeah. So, yeah, it's going to be a nice step up for them. Uh, the other thing we're doing is we're getting rid of that old HP case. Now, I know, I know, that old HP case got you all the ladies. Seriously, it did. It, yeah. it really did. I can attribute my marriage straight back to that case. So. That's right, that's right. Uh, but we are going to swap him out for a deep cool Baron case by uh, GamerStorm. This is the Baron case liquid, so named because it has an integrated deep cool Captain AIO, uh, 120 millimeter cooler. It's got an RGB flow indicator. Pretty cool case. Uh, supports micro ATX and full ATX boards and also has a tempered glass side panel. So this one will. Uh, we'll say upgrade the aesthetics quite substantially. So the Baron Case Liquid, like I said, has a built-in water cooler. So we are going to be water cooling the system. Now, does a 2200G deserve to be water cooled? Probably not. Will we see any benefits from water cooling a 2200G? No, but it's fun. What would you have even done if I wasn't here? <laughs> Been done an hour ago. <laughs> So there she is in all her glory. Uh, we've got the uh, MSI B350M Pro VH motherboard installed. We've got 16 gigabytes of Kingston 2400 DDR4 with our Ryzen 3 2200G. Uh, we did upgrade the graphics card to an EVGA GTX 760 Superclock card. We are reusing Red's power supply and I think one of his hard drives. I think that's about it though. Uh, beyond that, we've got everything water-cooled by a Deep Cool Captain 120 AIO. Uh, we also went ahead and installed an SSD, which he did not have before, so that'll alone improve his system performance quite a bit. But, moment of truth, let's see if this thing turns on. Now we got that DAT RGB game going on. No keyboard lights yet. No monitor light. We do have a CPU light on on the motherboard. Hmm. Stand by. So a little bit of troubleshooting here. Uh, we're not getting this to post, and I'm not sure why, because I've had this CPU and 
this motherboard working together before. So a little bit odd, and I'm not in focus. There we go, find me, Sony, thank you. Uh, so I'm not sure why we're not getting a post because like I said, I've had this combination working before. Uh, we've already tried a couple uh, troubleshooting steps, pulled power from the GPU, pulled the GPU out entirely, still not getting a post. So I think the next uh, step is probably reseat the RAM and then reseat the CPU. Hopefully that'll fix it. So it turned out to be the memory that was the problem. Uh, we weren't getting a post with the uh, the 8 gig 6 memory. Uh, however, I did swap it out for uh, my Geel 3200 kit, which by the way, Rhett, you can't have that. That's mine. Uh, but we are posting now, as you can see. So uh, let's go ahead and get Windows installed and maybe run Cinebench at the very least. So the build is all together. Rhett, what do you think of the new system? It's slick, way slick. <laughs> I was telling you earlier, didn't get any dates with this other thing, but I think. I don't think your wife's gonna be that happy that you're getting dates because of this machine now, <laughs> but uh, but I'm glad you're happy with it. Yeah. So again, we went from an i5 uh, 760 first generation i5 processor, 2.8 gigahertz with honestly a pretty low turbo boost to it. Uh, I think that thing only turboed to like 3.1, yeah. if I remember correctly. Uh, eight gigabytes of DDR3, but pretty slow DDR3. It was the stock stuff from HP, so I think it was probably 10.66. Mm -hmm. uh, you had a GTX 580 with 1.5 gigabytes of VRAM. Uh, we've changed all that. Now we have a Ryzen 3 2200G, kind of a lateral move from the uh, GTX 580 to the GTX 760, although as we said before, much, much more power efficient. So. Uh, should be a cooler running and a uh, little bit quieter system. Yeah, it already, you can already tell. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that HP, whew, that thing is loud. <laughs> uh, also, you're fully water-cooled now. Uh, you've got a solid state drive in there. Uh, this this one should serve you well for quite a while. Yeah, is it is it too much to say that this is my first water-cooled system? Uh, no. <laughs> it is. Awesome. <laughs> Welcome to the 2009, buddy. I've made it. I've made it. Yeah, I'm, I'm joining you guys up here in the other half of the 21st century. So. That's right. So I didn't get enough time to benchmark the system. It's still installing Windows behind me. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and have Rhett run some Cinebench numbers just so you can see like a before and after uh, for performance wise. Uh, CPU wise, it will be a pretty substantial jump. I'm not going to bother doing any gaming tests because I've done gaming tests on a GTX 760 before. You should know pretty much what that is. Anyway, if you like this video, make sure to hit the like button down below and subscribe to Craft Computing on your way down there. Leave me a comment, let uh, Rhett know what you think of his new system. I honestly think it uh, looks great and turned out fantastic. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching this one and I will see you in the next video. Cheers guys. Cheers. Rhett, you, you drank all your beer already. It was good. All right, so these beers are just a little bit different. Uh, these are actually imported from Japan. Uh, I wish I could tell you a lot about them. Unfortunately, I can't because the only way that these were able to sell in the US is because they slapped the Surgeon General stickers on the side of the cans. Uh, all of the writing that's actually on the cans is 100% Japanese. The only thing I do know is that this one right here is uh, Abashiri. Abashiri Brewery, something like that? Abashiri, yeah. Yeah. Uh, this one is a blue lager, and I don't, it's a 5% ABV, there it is. And then this guy is a Japanese India Pale Ale, so it's a Japanese IPA, this one's clocking in at 7%. The, the labeling on the uh, India Pale Ale yeah. is exciting. Yes. But I gotta say, a blue lager is also exciting. <laughs> so, I'm just gonna crack this one open first. You ready for this? Yes. <laughs> yes. This is so Japanese. Only they would do this. But otherwise... You actually might like that. It smells like Rainier. It's a low blow. <laughs> it doesn't smell like Rainier <laughs> at all. <laughs> Should ruin my joke. Ooh, that's nice. So what do you think of the blue lager? It tastes blue. It kind of tastes like a watered down otter pot. <laughs> <laughs> Ale brewed with blue yams. I, I'm reminded of Futurama right now. What smells like blue? This smells actually delicious. So I'm gonna drink the blue lager. Ooh, wow. I don't I don't even want to know. <laughs> wow. There's some interesting back end flavors on that. Uh, the 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 upfront is is definitely hop. It's it's not a variety of hop that I'm familiar with though. Where it's uh, it's got. Not necessarily like a citrus nose to it, but much more of the grassy and yeah. the, 
Um, nothing floral at all about this. It's it's like smelling crabgrass or something like that. Interesting. It's it's not unpleasant. I wonder what kind of hops they would use. It's not at all unpleasant. It's just very different. How's the blue? It's good. <laughs> it's different. I don't, like it doesn't taste like beer. <laughs> Which is fun though. Yeah. Like, it tastes kind of exotic. <laughs> and I just love the floaties and the fact that it's blue. Yeah.